Hi guys, welcome on my YouTube channel Crochet Pink Pumpkin. Today is the day. Today is the day I'm publishing uh, my bag tutorial. Maybe you know which bag I'm talking about. You know it's that bag. So for the story, um, you know the brand Yarn Inspiration. They reach out my reel, you know, my reel on Instagram, and it kind of went viral. And honestly, I was not expecting it, so it, it was kind of a little bit overwhelming. And a lot of people asked me for the pattern, so I published a pattern last week on my blog, and I'm making right now the video, the follow-up video, you know, to to make the bag. So I made that one, the pink one. I, with velvet yarn, I made that one as well. I'm obsessed with the color, it's so pretty. And there is a lining also in every bag. You know, yeah. I got out of my way a little bit because I'm not very good at sewing, but I wanted to make it uh, to make it good, you know, like a, like a real bag. And I also made that one. This one is, uh, you know, like pink and I should use a lining. Um, yes, little stars, so cute. So, um, if you want to follow this video, I will say it's an um, intermediate level video because they, the only thing is that there is a stitch that is a little bit difficult, you know, to make these loops like that. It's called the double loop stitch. But don't worry, I made a video right here to learn how to make it before started making the bag. And it's also um, intermediate level because there is a swing part. So you can add a little bit of uh, complexity, but I'm sure you can do it between the pattern, the video, you can make it happen. And last thing for the pattern, you have two options. So you can follow the pattern directly on my blog. The link is in the description box, but you can also buy it on Etsy, it's a PDF version, so you can actually print it. And by doing that, if you do that, thank you so much because you are supporting my blog. I can keep making patterns thanks to you, so thank you so much. And it will be also easier for you to follow, uh, to follow the pattern by printing it. So the link is in the description box as well. So um, let's get started with the list of supplies. If you printed the pattern already, um, you have a checklist over here so you can follow step by step. Um, let's start with the yarn. Uh, for that bag over here, I use this yarn. It's from Loops and Fred and it's called Chenille Home, like that. And it's sold at um, Michael stores. Um, you will need one yarn. I say that you may need to, it, it really depends on the size of your uh, of your loops because with mine was what was just enough but if your loops are bigger you may need to but start with one and you know if you need a second one get a second one then for that one which I have to say is my favorite one um, you will need the same thing is Shiny Home from Loof, Loops and Fred from Michael Stores. And you will need one, as I say, you may need two depending on the size of your loops. And this one here, it's a, you can tell it's a velvety. So it's that yarn. I, I kind of destroyed it. Uh, it's this yarn from Bernard Velvet Plus. But this one, you will need two for sure. You you will need two yarns of that one, and you can find it on Amazon or um, at Joanne's Joanne store. Um, then what else do we need? Oh yes, we need cotton thread like that. So for the pink one, I recommend to go for pink, obviously, and for the green one, you can go for black because you know it's not really visible if you stitch with um, with black cotton thread like that. Uh, then the shoulder chain, this chain. Uh, 
So a lot of people ask me the link. I actually bought it on Amazon, so you can find the list of find uh, the link, the Amazon link. So it, this one you see, it's like super thick. I I I just like it so much. I think it it gives such a, like a trendy vibes to to the bag. The only thing is that it's a little bit heavy, but you know sometimes you have to do some sacrifice, I guess. And I got the gold one, the silver one here. So as I say, every links are um, in the description box. And also I wanted to show you because I first got this one on Amazon. It's a little bit thinner. I show you the difference. Like it's a little bit thinner. I decided to not go for it, but I still I still wanted to show you. So if you want a thinner um chain please let me know in the comment section and i will give you the link for the for the small one i mean not the small one the thin one um then you will need obviously crochet hook i for whatever yarn i got i use one crochet hook and it's a nine millimeter over here then you will need I, it gets like so messy. I don't show you, but it's such a mess right here. But whatever. So you need a darning needle right here. It's actually like, you know, to uh, to sew the cotton thread. Here, a darning needle. You have metallic one or plastic one, you know, whatever you want. And I show you the box. I'm so proud of my box. Um, you, you will need stitch marker like here so i will use specific color of stitch markers to just to show you where the stitches are you don't have to have the same color but it may help you know like to 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 use it while watching the video so i got a big box because i always like lose them round counter lab counter whatever you call it i don't really know how it's called this thing you will need it. Um, I use it in almost all my creation. And it's a good one because I bought it separately from all the crochet stuff and it's super reliable. Like that, you do that, you know. And it's super reliable compared to the one you can get from crochet set because you know, like this kind of thing, I, come on, I cannot stand them, they are just, not reliable at all you know like you make like 40 rounds and up you get messed up and you don't know where you are anymore so i don't like this thing i do not recommend using this thing i recommend using this thing more reliable and then for let's start the lining part this one's the crochet part so for the lining obviously you will need some fabric I do like this type of fabric because it's a little bit waxed. So if you want to clean it, you know, if you have some gel or something like spilled in your bag, it's just like easier to wash. So you will need a rectangle of 18 inches by 12 inches. And in centimeter, if you are watching this video in centimeter is a 45 centimeter by 30 centimeter. So whatever fabric you want, you know, you just need uh, these dimensions. Then you will need magnetic, uh, button magnetic snaps. I don't know if we can say just that. I just like read it this way. So two magnetic buttons basically like that. I got a full box. And just to show you, uh, one button, you will need two. One button is made of, okay, I cannot, oh my God. Let's take a nozzle. So you will need these two parts. So you see it clips together. I'm not gonna do it because after I cannot take it out with my nails. So these two parts plus these two round parts. I will show you in the tutorial how to use it. And so this is one button. So you will need two and I order a box from Amazon like that you I have forever buttons. Then you will need either a sewing machine if you have one, but if you don't have one, don't worry, you can sew by hand, you know, it may take a little bit longer, but you can definitely do it. And even if you have a sewing machine, you will need 
sewing needles because when we sew the lining to the crochet bag you cannot use a machine so you know you're gonna need sewing needle and white or black um, sewing thread then you will need scissors good scissors because when you cut the lining i've learned that i didn't have good scissors and it just gets so bad so i bought new scissors and it just makes it so much better um you will need craft glue like that i always use this one uh, because i just like it you just can take it out if you need to take it out it's just just easy to to use also you will need uh, some paper some so maybe you need a4 paper or later format papers i just put everything on my blog every dimension for the sewing pattern are on my blog so i did um printable sewing pattern you can download it print it and it's in my blog as i said and also you i will show you in the video how to draw the lines if you need to draw the lines and you don't have a printer so you will need piece of paper three pieces of paper a pencil a pencil a roller obviously and i think that's it every yeah i think that's it <laughs> let's get started with the pattern So I just wanted to add some notes before we start. Uh, si vous parlez français, vous pouvez mettre les sous-titres en français en bas à droite uh, de l'écran. The use of different supplies from that indicating may vary the final rendering. I will be using markers with specific colors to make stitches more visible on the video, but you don't have to do the same. Also, turning chain will always be considered as the first stitch of the row. Start counting stitch from it. The pattern is available on my blog and the printable PDF file is available on my Etsy. You can slow down the video with a UDF reader if you need and comment if you have any questions. Let's get started. Okay, so crochet part one and we start with a chain of 16, 16 chain stitch. The number between parentheses is a number of stitch you have to have at the end of the row, so it helps you counting and make sure uh, your row is correct. So you make 16, and on stitch number 15, I will put a dark pink marker just to make it more visible. So a dark pink, dark pink on number 15 and a light pink on number 16. And then I will make a turning chain in blue. So on the next row, you will make 15 double loop stitch and the turning chain will become the first stitch of your row. So the blue one becomes the first one and you start crocheting in the dark pink. So you skip the light pink marker.
the blue one is for stitch number 15 and on stitch number 16 I will put an orange marker right here so it's the last WP made and a turning CH in yellow. So now we will start row number two. You will make 15 single crochet plus one increase plus one turning chain. So turn your work, your turning chain becomes the first stitch of your row and do not skip any stitch and start crocheting in the marker orange, which was DL number 16 of row one. So you make 15 single crochet and after this 15 single crochet, you will make one increase. So here it's my increase, so it's two single crochet in the same stitch. I put a dark blue marker on the stitch number 17 and I will put a light blue marker on the last stitch, so number 18. And then you will make a turning chain and the turning chain is going to be orange. There you go. So you are done with round so now we start with round 3 you will make 17 double loop stitch plus 1 turning CH so your turning CH becomes the first stitch of the row you skip stitch 18 so in light blue and you start crocheting in dark blue so in, in uh, stitch number 17 of round 2 and you make 17 double loop stitch
so on stitch number 17 I will put an orange marker and on the last double loop stitch I will put a yellow marker And then a turning chain in light blue. So now we start row four. So you turn your work, the turning chain, so the blue one becomes the first stitch of the row. Do not skip any stitch and start crocheting in um, in the yellow marker. And you will make 17 single crochet plus one increase at the end. So 17 single crochet and one increase at the end So on the last single crochet, I put a light pink marker, so it's after 17 single crochet, and then I start my increase. So the first stitch of the increase will be in orange, sorry, in orange, and the last stitch of the increase will be in blue. So here I made my last stitch, oops, I lost my hook, <laughs> in blue and the turning chain will be in uh, light pink. Up, and then we will start round uh, five. So you will, don't also don't hesitate to count stitches after your row just to make sure that everything is correct like I do right now. It really helps. <laughs> so round five, you will need 20 stitches at the end of the row. You, the turning chain becomes the first stitch of the row. Skip the blue marker, so single crochet number 20, and start crocheting in the stitch marker orange. So that was the single crochet number 19 of row four. So you start crocheting in this one and you will make 19 double loop stitch plus a turning chain.
So at the end of row five, I put a yellow marker on the 19th stitch and a light blue marker on the last double loop uh, stitch that I've made. So number, um, that's the stitch number 20. So here a light blue marker on the last double loop stitch and a dark blue marker on the turning chain. So now we start row number six. Uh, you will make 19 single crochets, so no increase on this row. You skip the light blue marker and start crocheting in the yellow marker and you make 19 single crochets. So the orange marker is the 19th uh, stitch, then I will put a light pink marker for the 20th stitch, so the last single crochet of the row. And then don't ask me why I put the turning chain in light pink as well. I'm sorry, that's not very logical, but anyway, light pink for turning chain. So now from row 7 to row 12 is the same thing as you did for row 5 and 6 and you will make this row 5 and 6 three other times. So that will give you six more rows and so basically is one row of double loop stitch and one row of single crochet and don't forget to always keep the first stitch of the row and I will meet you after this uh, six rows.
so we arrive at the end of row 12 and I put a stitch marker orange on the 19th stitch right here and on the last stitch of the I mean the last single crochet of the row I put a green stitch marker and then you make a turning chain and this one I will mark it in blue Now turn your work, turning chain becomes the first stitch of the row, so the blue one, you skip the green one and you start crocheting in the orange one. So you skip a single crochet 20 and you start in orange and you make a slip stitch. So here my first stitch, sti slip stitch, oh my god it's so hard to say, first slip stitch. And then you will make a second one. Second one here. And after that you make 14 double loop stitch. So you don't go to the end of the row, you only make 14. So on the double loop stitch number 13, I will put a blue stitch marker and I will put a pink stitch marker on the last uh, stitch of the row, which is also the last double stitch and it's going to be pink. So here at the end of the row, you have a total of seven stitches because you made the two slip stitch at the beginning. And then the turning chain is green. So now we start row 14. You will make 13 single crochet plus one turning chain. You skip the pink stitch marker and you start in the blue stitch marker to make 13 single crochet. And here you put a pink stitch marker on number 14 and a orange one on 13 right here orange pink and then turning chain will be in blue that time So 
So here I'm removing the stitch markers that are not useful. Is round 15. You make 13 double loop stitches and one turning chain. You skip stitch marker pink and you start crocheting in stitch marker orange. And you make 13 double loop stitches. So here in blue it's stitch number 13. Then you are making the last double loop stitch and I will put it in green. And then you make a turning chain. This one is light pink. So now from row 16 to row 21 is the same as row 14 and row 15. And you will make that three times. So basically it's a row of single crochet and a row of double loop stitch and that three times. That gives you a total of six more rows and don't forget to skip the first stitch of the row.
so now we are done uh, cutting the part one of your bag you should have something that looks like that well i hope you have something that looks like that get the thread and pass it through the loop to make a knot and then i will use a darning needle to to make another knot So now we will crochet the second part of your bag. So basically it's the exact same thing as part one from round zero to row 12. So you just have to rewind uh, the video and watch the, round the, the row zero and the row 12 um, of the part one. And I will meet you after the row number 12. So now we are at row 13 of crochet part two and so you skip the first stitch of the row you know and you go to the next one and you make 19 double loop stitch and when you make the turning chain you will use it to cut the thread and make a knot with this uh, with this turning chain So now we will start the assembly of part one and two. You have to position part one and two as on in the video and sew it together with a darning needle and a pink cotton thread or if you are making the green bag in black or pink. And in the seam also use it to insert the remaining cut threads uh, that were made during the crocheted part like that they, they get uh, they get stuck in the seam
and now you will take the sides of the bag like on the video like that and that will create the bottom of your bag so you just like pinch it and with a clip you can you know like clip it this way like that the other side and you will do that for the two sides and then you will just sew it together And now uh, going from the bottom to the top of the bag, you will start sewing uh, both sides to, to close the bag, you know, to close the side of the bag.
So after sewing both sides, you can turn the bag over so the loops are on the outside and the outer part of your bag is ready. Also be careful, you know, when you turn the bag over, just little by little, just to not break the stitches. So just a little disclaimer before we start, I'm a sewing beginner, so the lining technique you're about to see is basically Mathilde's technique, so it's really not an expert technique. So feel free to watch more videos for more expertise and more like lining tutorials. And yeah, I'm a beginner, so it's probably not perfect. That's why also I will not be commenting the sewing part video because I don't want to give any advice that are just not correct. So just use it as a visual support uh, for the pattern and please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. 